What's up, Foot Clan? Do not miss today's show. We got starts of the week for the most important week of the year so far, and we're going to get you through. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Ronald Jones the second, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time, yeah. <laughs> a little more melodic. Put a little more crooner on there, one. Yeah, that's what I got. I got the crooner vibe. I got the the playoffs are here. Ba 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 do do. That's exactly <laughs> right. Welcome in Thursday, December twelfth. Doesn't it? It just feels like show eight hundred and thirty six, doesn't it? It's got it, that eight thirty six feel. It does because that is. My favorite number. <laughs> Always was growing up. This is a big time for me. Finally made it to show. 836. Uh, I tried to get that on my basketball jersey. They wouldn't allow it. I was going to say, I imagine. It would have fit. <laughs> <laughs> well done, my friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was right there. That's fantastic work. That just explains Jason's personality so much that instead of hanging his head, he was like, that's home good, run joke. That's a good joke. This is, there's no two ways about it. Oh, that just reminds me of uh, <laughs> I played in a, a rec league one time, and they had us write our numbers on, and you could write whatever you wanted. And my, I had my friend's jersey, so I gave him double zeros. Mm. And uh, his, they, they called him they called him boobs the whole season. <laughs> so front and back. He never played. He never played again. Uh, <laughs> oh. We've got a jam packed show today. News, fantasy forecast, starts of the week for playoffs week two. The Boom Boom Kicker, which is really going to anchor your championship squad. It's playoff time. That's right. We are here, and we are here to help. Twitter, at the FF Ballers. I'll actually be doing the... Uh, oh, yes. The live stream. Somebody will. Somebody will. Jason yeah. or myself will be doing the live stream this Sunday. That'll be fun. You can find us on YouTube.com slash the <laughs> fantasy footballers. Well, you've... Yeah, uh, this season you've introduced a new wrinkle to the Sunday Live. I d I did. Yeah. What did I do? Don't you insult Brooks a lot? Uh, oh. that's that's made its way into. I've watched several of these. There's, it's been a common I, theme. Just take I, some shots at him. I don't take shots at Brooks. I just I talk about what like what's happening, what things are Brooks are doing. Did you just spill on yourself again? Oh, man. I did, right on my belly. <laughs> and I was glad I was on the close-up cam for you. For oh, that. right oh. on the belly. Oh, I think what you were talking like I just pointed out the one week where Brooks was being a super arrogant guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as Brooks is prone to do. Oh, man. what The arrogance on that guy is it knows no it's, bounds. It's a stench. <laughs> yeah, well, you thought your head was big. Yeah. You're killing me. All right, let's move on. <laughs> News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, this is big. Josh Jacobs, the MRI came back clean. Josh Jacobs expected to play in Week 15 against the Jaguars. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. Expected. But John Gruden, in uh, tricky fashion, says the positive results does not mean he's going to play in Week 15. Here's the thing. Jacksonville's not not good they have been so the opportunity is great one of the if not the worst de well no the cardinals are out there but one of the worst defenses over the last couple months they have just been so so bad and and that's why this matters uh, you know significantly Fan there are going to be great fantasy outcomes from the raiders backfield it's just a matter of who is it and unfortunately it's a four o'clock game time yeah so come on, Gruden. People need to know. So if you if you were planning on rolling Jacobs, hopefully you were able to grab Washington yeah, off the you, waiver if, wire. If you've got the duo, you are set this week. That being said, if you if you grabbed Washington with a goal of playing him yeah, because you chose that makes it murky to gamble, you don't have a guaranteed player in Washington, that's and true. so that's a a wrinkle. So have have some other options or start 
You keep your eyes peeled. James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster, both full participants at practice on Wednesday. We brought it up yesterday with James Conner. Like, how confident will you be in this is a Sunday night game? We talked about the practice reports probably adding some momentum. Yeah, I think they're going to play. This this was the return date I had expected for, for James Conner. And James Conner, they are the Sunday night game? Am I remembering that correct? Yeah, that's the Buffalo so Sunday night that, game. That could be a situation. Maybe you had Connor and you grabbed Washington. I think I would if if it came down to it and Jacobs was inactive and Washington was uh, a, a guy you had on your bench, I would make that move and to go go to Washington. Otherwise, you have James Connor as your backup plan. Yeah, that's not bad. Derek Henry didn't practice on Wednesday. He likely doesn't need a it. maintenance day, but. We're talking about it. Not worried. Not worried. All right. Do you think Adam Thielen is going to play this week? What's the latest? <laughs> I Who do, knows? Yeah, I do think Adam Thielen is going to play this week. Um, on your bench? They ha on my bench, yes. I would be very, very hesitant to put him in the lineup. The last two games he's been in, he has barely been in. I mean, it's r truly been since week six, since he's played a legitimate full game because of this hamstring issue. I'm I'm waiting. And and clearly, if you have made the playoffs with Adam Thielen, you found a pivot. You found yeah. a different option. You you know, because you haven't had him the last forever, keep doing what you've been doing would be my advice. Even if Adam Thielen goes off on your bench, I, I you know, unless unless your pivot was Devontae Parker and now it's like, "Oh, great." Right. If you have to play Thielen, okay, then glad he's back, but I would rather wait. Okay. All right. Damian Williams returned to practice on Wednesday. I don't think – I mean well, – I'm just trying to read your faces on Damian Williams. It's it not was, good. It's not good. My face is not a uh, happy face. Right. I, I presume that Damian Williams will return to the front of the timeshare, uh, but it's much like we were – or at least me. I'll speak for myself. Much like I was with San Francisco last week. Felt like someone was going to have a good game. You just had no clue who it was going to be. The The odds on favorite is Damian Williams, but you, if like Jason said for Thielen, if you're in the playoffs with Damian Williams, I'm going to keep riding with that other option. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of strange, ironic, whatever you want to say. Alexander Madison didn't practice. Bilal Powell has been ruled out. These were both last week's kind of diamonds in the rough potentially. And here you are with Dalvin Cook practicing in full. Not so easy to be the starter, is it? <laughs> Got him. Uh, Bilal Powell's going to be out. Lev Bell, and, any and changes in your thoughts on, on Lev? No, it was, it was, it's exactly the same. I think he's a startable asset, but your ceiling is capped. He's just going to get enough volume to where he can he can be in your lineup. I mean, I, it's him I'm and feeling, nothing right now. Yeah, I'm feeling better about Lev Bell than I, I think I was. With Bilal Powell out, the volume that you, you saw said, that that bowling score he hit. Correct. No, I mean look at look at yesterday or <laughs> look at last week. Seventeen carries for Devin Singletary, six receptions out of the backfield. Not a lot of options, but that he was productive against the Ravens uh, defense. Probably because he's better. That's very very possible. <laughs> very possible. My bad. <laughs> I assume you'd rather have Devin Singletary than Lev Bell in a dynasty league. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> um. More updates for tonight. Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews, both listed as questionable. Mark Andrews is expected to, quote, give it a go. The old college try. Now, there have been multiple games this year where that was kind of the story with Mark Andrews, where he's going to give it a go. I would expect his snaps to be low. Nine snaps last week. Uh, not that, well, that low. Was, that I, was I expected to be better. Right, than that. but just. But people want to know Mark Andrews or pivoting to the Ian Thomas, Tyler Higby. Uh, oh. situation. As of right now, those two names I still have in front of Mark Andrews, but I do think Mark uh, it's 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 a it's a dicey play, but I think you can play him. He has you you brought it up. Through this season, Mark Andrews has been injured more often than he has not been injured. And through this season, he's pretty much been a top 5 tight end more often than he's not. So, yeah, it's it's dicey, it's playoffs. You don't want to go out there and have him re-injured and, you know, in when you when you've lost Adam Thielen or you're worried about getting him back, there are so many wide receiver options. There just there just aren't that many at the tight end position. If you can't grab Ian Thomas, then you probably need to roll Mark Andrews out tonight. 
All right, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy news. Download the free app today. Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. By the way, if you have a start sit question, you can use the tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. The number two start sit question of the week was the Mark Andrews Tyler Higby situation. Oh, gosh. Uh, we'll feature some of the most popular start sit decisions on the show today and tomorrow. That one's so funny because you, you have to guess on Everett's. That, it's the same health. thing with Ian Thomas. If for Mark Andrews, maybe you grabbed Thomas or Higby, I would much rather play Ian Thomas or. Or Tyler Higby, if they're if, alone, if their uh, if their counterpoints were out, but we just don't know yet. Yeah, basically, I just I in our CBS league, um, we did that as a charity league. We played it through. I'm sitting here with Mark Andrews on my semifinal roster, Ian Thomas on my bench. My plan right now is to just play Mark Andrews, and if he's inactive, Oof. I'm gonna roll Ian Thomas. Well, I mean, he's gonna be active. That's the problem. But will he show up as an He's, he's going to be active on my roster. All I'm right. gonna, I don't blame you. I'm just going to be in that boat because even last week. I hope you brought a bucket. Last week on that nine, what was it, nine snaps? Yes. He had one very close uh, up-the-seam touchdown pass from Lamar Jackson that he just missed. I mean, it's, that, that possibility is what you're in for. So. Yeah. All right. Let's start here. Broncos, 5-8. and eight. Chiefs, 9-4. and four. Games at Arrowhead. Chiefs are 10-point favorites. It's a 46-and-a-half point over under. What are the big storylines in this game to you? Drew Locke with the monster game last week. This is not going to be easy. The Chiefs secondary, if uh, you can say many things about them, I think one of the ones uh, that I would choose is that they are a playmaking secondary. Tyran Matthew Gives you different looks and different expectations. That could be tough for Drew Locke on the road, but he passed the road test last week. Arrowhead's a different story, I think. Yeah, I mean, early season, the Chiefs looked like they were a defense that you wanted to throw on. That that is that has not just changed a little bit. That is drastically, completely turned on its head. Part of it is because you can run on the Chiefs. It's easy. It's very similar to like the Chargers. That's a team you don't want to throw against because you have so much success running the ball that you just you don't end up throwing that much. And you want to keep their offense off the field, which running the ball helps with. The last 10 weeks, I don't know if you saw the stat, Andy. The last 10 weeks, that's a very large sample. The Kansas City Chiefs are the number one most difficult, fewest points given up against wide receivers. So, you know, this is... Do you want to trust Cortland Sutton in a bad matchup with Drew Locke? On the road. On the road. In I mean, the toughest place to play in the National Football League? I don't in want In the winter? To. Who I mean, are, but but in those match or in, in that list where the Chiefs were, were the worst, where are the Chargers? Where are the Chargers in it, that list? Yeah, because weren't you, you – I remember you going through this. We were talking about this yesterday. You said they were – Either second worst You're or third worst. You're saying because worst. Sutton had a nice game against the Chargers. Yeah, he did. Drew Locke threw two touchdowns against the Chargers in his debut. Yeah, it's trust. It's how much do you trust him and what would you pivot to? Would you play Debo Samuel? The Chargers are number 31. Thank you. The well, next worst yeah. matchup. Yeah. So last week, Sutton, in a game that Drew Locke exploded, he didn't, didn't do much. Correct. Uh, would you play Debo Samuel against Atlanta over Cortland Sutton? <sighs> Those guys are, are neck and neck in the rankings. Yeah, that's... Or, or Michael Gallup against the Rams. Is that where you would be willing to pivot? I have both Debo and Michael Gallup ahead of Cortland Sutton right now in my rankings. Yeah, I think I'd be willing to go to those guys. Do you like Phillip Lindsay then against that uh, Chiefs defense that gives up 26.8 points per game to the running back position? Every week we like Phillip Lindsay. <laughs> Phillip Lindsay is the best, worst fantasy running back this year. 100% well set. Because... He looks awesome on film. He is great. He's the running back 13 on the season, but I don't know that you've ever played Phil Lindsay. I, I think he had, off the top of my head, he had one burst game. But other than that, you're not you're not very pleased. You you've that never you've been, been playing him every you, week. You've never been less happy with the running back 13. I mean, the last four weeks, even last week, you got a touchdown. Was the running back 17? That was great. The, the three weeks prior to that, all that he played well in and looked good in, he was the running back 37, 27, 32. Yeah, touchdowns are the problem. And then last week we had one called back, finally got in, 
to save his week, but it's it's far from a guarantee anymore. The but matchup is good. He's the at, at least at the running back thirteen. Sorry, it's he's safe. I think you play him in I, this match. I do too. Sure. The the you you've got a guaranteed workload, a talented player, a plus matchup. He is a guy that should be in most rosters. But I think what's what is going to happen this week is what's happened more often than not, which is a very limited ceiling. He's just a guy that's going to plug one of your roster spots, give you solid production, 12, 13, 14 points, and that's it. Yeah, Denver has allowed the six most fantasy points to the quarterback position over the last four weeks. Gets Patrick Mahomes in this one. I don't think the recipe to beat the Chiefs for Denver is going to be Drew Locke versus Patrick Mahomes. It's going to be on the ground. That should be the opportunity. Slow the game down, the Marlon Mack approach. What about the running backs on the Chiefs side of the ball? Damian Williams returned to practice. If he's active, do you look at him and no one else, or do you just stay away from all the Chiefs running backs against a Broncos defense that is 12th in the league against fantasy running backs? I'm staying away. Yeah, I'm, I'm staying away as well. The Denver Broncos are, are 12th on the season. The last 10 weeks, they are the 27th uh best matchup so they're they're very difficult to run on okay what about Tyree Kill what's your temperature on Tyree Kill right now after last week it's like Amari Cooper you you just play him you, yep you, you want those big yeah. games you have to have them in your lineup every single week um anybody else at the wide receiver position for the Chiefs that you're looking at you not got, Sammy <laughs> not Sammy one of my favorite phrases I mean it's I'm gonna get it my first tattoo not Sammy? It's going to say not Sammy. Never Sammy. No. The, it's just going to be a boot stepping on a lizard. That situation <laughs> we had earlier in the year where it was you could play every single wide receiver for the Chiefs, McCole Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, those days seemed like they were years ago and because now it's you play Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, and that's it. Yes, Ty, uh, Travis Kelsey has been great. Noah Fant, there was some upside in this matchup. The Chiefs defense, 27th in the league, giving up 11.5 points per game to the tight end. Fant has shown multiple games uh, of you know big playability. But then you have this wrinkle now where he was sidelined on Wednesday's practice with a foot injury. X-rays are negative. He says he's good. Is that enough for you to roll him out there? It, 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 no, the, the foot injury gives me pause. I mean, this is a player that has been really on the cusp of whether or not I'm willing to – Put him in my lineup. He's had a couple big games. More often than not, he's not been good for fantasy. He was starting to get to where it's like, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to put him in. In my dynasty matchup this week, I'm, I've am i got Jack Doyle in my lineup and Noah Fant on the bench. And I was considering putting Fant in, and now this foot injury goes, you know, maybe, maybe I just stick with Doyle. Uh, limited upside there, but more guaranteed work. All right. We're going to pause before we move on to the Buccaneers and Lions to thank today's sponsor, and it's a good one. It's a delicious one. Omaha Steaks, mm, the holiday mm, gift yes, yes, that mm. America has loved for like 100 plus years. It's a staple of this show to have this special deal each and every holiday season. They have a limited time holiday offer. I was just talking to my wife this morning about a gift for her parents who live out of state. I'm like, what would be better than going to omahasteaks.com and entering the code footballers and ending up with a gift package that everyone will love for just sixty nine ninety nine, and here's what you get. Let me hear it. This is why that price is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Order now, and you get four six ounce bacon wrapped filet mignons. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Four savory premium pork chops. Okay. I'll eat them. Four Omaha steaks burgers. Oh, those are good. Four perfectly browned potatoes au gratin. Oh, <laughs> I love those things. Four made from scratch caramel apple yes. tartlets. There Woo! it is. You get the seasoning packet. You get a free six piece cutlery set and a cutting board. Just for fun, just for the holiday spirit. All that delicious food, sixty nine ninety nine. Order now and you can get the favorite gift holiday package, plus the free six piece cutlery set and cutting board for only sixty nine ninety nine. Go to omahasteaks.com. This is the key. Go to the search bar, type footballers in the search bar, omahasteaks.com, and type the code footballers. Want to thank today's sponsor, Burrow. The holidays are coming up, and chances are you'll be having guests over. Don't show off that old busted beat up hand me down couch show off a brand new burrow couch burrow sofas are customizable pick your favorite you pick your fabric color leg finish armrest style length you want to be fancy you had a chase lounge or an ottoman maybe i want to be fancy then you can add both andy okay that's oh. something that they let you do 
Burrow's durable fabric is naturally scratch and stain resistant, and each sofa comes with built-in USB chargers. No more dead phones. No, no. My, During Sunday, my sister just got one of these for her apartment. She for, loves it. We're all checking the fantasy football scores nonstop on with Sunday. With 100% battery. That's right. No, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, man. No more dead phones. Uh, my living room, I just redid it. I've got the burrow chair. I got a burrow sofa. I am, I'm loving it. They're, they're, they're fantastic couches. They are beautiful. And right now you can get 75 bucks off a new sofa and free one week shipping at burrow.com slash footballers. That's B U R R O W.com slash footballers for 75 bucks off a new burrow sofa. And want to remind people. Yeah. FootClanGiveaway.com. Yeah, this is uh, – I think we're giving that thing away really, really soon. A Nick yes. Chubb signed jersey available right now for free to enter. Help us help you. Mm, that's well a, that's a, well, yeah. I've never heard that before. No, that's brand new. I like it, though. Buccaneers at 6-7 and seven take on the 3-9-1 and one Lions. Two teams going in the opposite direction right now. Lions are allowing the second most passing yards in football – the Buccaneers just lost Mike Evans and have some questions around Jameis Winston. And let's bring the people into our own struggles here mm. because we have a very important matchup in NFL League One. Some say the most important matchup in history. In history. We have the opportunity now in the semifinals to defeat uh, Adam Stank. <laughs> oh, get bodied. And uh, sorry, sorry, Adam Rank, uh, wonderful friend of the show. He is a good friend. Except for right now. This enemy of a hate his guts. For the week. And we have this opportunity to go up against him. Uh, Jameis Winston has been an absolute monster as our quarterback. And he's had Mike Evans this whole year. And you already have the variable. Okay, no Mike Evans. Well, we were fine. We're going to play Jameis Winston. No big deal. He didn't have Evans for most of the game last week. He was fine. He does his Jameis Winston thing. Which is uh, run around a lot and throw touchdowns. Throw it to everyone on the field. Everybody, everyone and anybody. gets a ball. Yeah, the Oprah of the quarterback position. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. You get a ball, yeah. and you get a ball. That's right. Generous, but now reports he's wearing a cast on his right hand. He's got a slight fracture. He's gotten a second opinion. He's okay. They're six and seven. They are not out of playoff contention officially, but probably are. But not, you know. New first season for Bruce Arians. Yeah. Opportunity here, three straight wins. A matchup to die for against the Lions defense that is just friendly. So what do you do? Uh, Jameis Winston early this week was my start of the week. I had him in the dock. He was the guy that I was going with. And I pulled him because of several factors, but it, it is dicey. There are, you know, the the outcome where he just does what he's done every single game. He's been a top 10 quarterback pretty much every single game except for one where they blew the team out, didn't need to throw the ball at all. And so you, you keep rolling with him even after he lost Mike Evans. I mean, Mike Evans gooses some games. It doesn't matter. Right. Jameis is fine. So there is that side of it. The other side is, okay, you've got a, an injury that, yes, he was able to play through in the game, but the adrenaline is going. Is he going to be able to act? He's not practicing right now. And if you're not practicing because of it and you're wearing a cast and, you know, the, so that side is the potential of basically not having him. But let's just say he's active. Then there's the worry of, well, his one bad game came in a blowout, right, where they, they were just able to beat him easily, run the ball, on them and they didn't need Jameis to do much. This looks like one of those matchups because on the other side of the ball, Marvin Jones goes to IR where Jermaine Curse and Marvin Hall already reside. The depth chart for the Detroit Lions wide receivers, Kenny Galladay, Danny Amendola. Okay. Then you have uh, uh, Chris Lacey. You guys – no, of Chris course. Lacey, yeah, of course, right? yeah. We, I, totally. I, then you guys are better than me. Um, <laughs> oh, that's it. That There's not even another There's not even hey. another practice squad guy who's been brought up yet. That is it. Where's your kick the tires for Antonio Brown speech? I think they don't have anything to play for. Yeah. Here's what I, I will say. The game's at home in Detroit. They're only, it's only a three-point gap. 
Vegas has it as a, a Buccaneers three point favorites, forty six and a half point over under. So in that situation, wow. you're looking at it. You know, at least Vegas doesn't have it as an extreme blowout. This line opened with the Bucks favored by four, and it's gone in the Lions' direction, which I that's Jameis Winston injury. Yeah. That's what that concerns. is. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm playing Jameis Winston if he's active. Yeah, that's that's. They've where already I said lean. he's not going to re-injure himself at least through the normal motion. Now he could get hit on the hand, but I, I am preparing. Like I've, I've whatever the my secondary option, I would pick them up right now. I'm not waiting until Sunday morning. For We've a, picked just up Ryan case. Fitzpatrick, right? We have, and so I'm waiting for more news to come through. This will be. I'm sure this will be a, a delightful question for you guys on Sunday live. <laughs> yeah, the number three start sit question right now is Ryan Tannehill or Jameis Winston. Oh, Tannehill. That one, uh, that one's easier for yeah. me to pivot away. Yeah, I, I, I will say that I love as well. I've, Is that I've, just pure risk aversion? Because in no, a, that's because I love Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, this but week. how do you, you? But Jameis Winston versus Detroit is a better matchup. Sure, but it, if if you take the hand out of it, it's a better matchup, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, but there there the are there, there are other factors. You know, the the whether the Lions can keep up with them. Um, and the loss of Mike Evans all factor in. Early this week, I would have definitely been on the Jameis side. I, I think I am on the Tannehill like, side. Houston, who Ryan Tannehill is playing, that's the team that just gave up Oh yeah, like 303 to Drew Locke. Lock it in. Yeah, so the, it's a fine matchup for a fantasy quarterback. Yeah, it is. It is. Ronald Jones, and you, you don't have the risk. Yeah. You don't have the risk. All right, Ronald Jones. Speaking of risk. Peyton Barber, both risky out. options this week. Ronald Jones should be a great play. Should, should be. be. Not good. Should, should be. be a great play. You know, I've said I almost made it my start of the week, and I was like, "What am I doing? <laughs> I don't want to do that." He he's one whiff pass protection away from not playing anymore. He was back in the double digit carries, had five targets last week. I believe last week he had the, both Peyton Barber and Ronald Jones had the exact same amount of carries. So this is kind of a, a, a timeshare where you could play either piece. I expect. I and and you guys have been better on calling the lines this this year, but like I think the Buccaneers easily handle the Lions this week, and if that's the case, the running game should be good. But it is so risky. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Bo Scarborough on the other side mm. is he a, a Bo flex this week? No. Uh, the Buccaneers can do one thing on defense: it's shut down running backs, and Bo Scarborough is just a grinder. So Adrian this, Peterson or Bo Scarborough? Adrian Peterson. Peterson. Okay. I, I'll pretty much answer whatever name you throw out there. Chris Godwin should have a Chris very, Godwin. very high floor. Kenny Galladay, we're going to talk about him later, huh? Yeah, I mean, oh, these are man. two guys who are going to have a, an immense amount of the target market share of their respective teams in Chris Godwin and Kenny Galladay and two great wide receivers, both facing poor defensive units so yeah sign me up across the board all right we have a, we have a brashad perryman justin watson bet right <laughs> yeah this is a real thing real exciting scotty miller returned to practice as well that is a problem because well, it shouldn't be if you're a superstar right scotty miller <laughs> shouldn't stand you, in the way Mike. of a superstar there's so look it was mike mike evans was the only reason that justin watson couldn't get on the field eric and also scotty miller so here's Here's the thing, Fookland. Here's Scotty Miller. He's the one standing in the way of superstar. The the Bucks regime that came in, they drafted Scott Miller as their small speed guy. I mean, it, Bruce Arians has like a thing. Yeah, he has like I need, need I need a hundred and seventy pound four two uh, wide receiver on the outside. He's done it everywhere he's gone. I need this. He's got like his. You know, some players they take their system and they 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 force it. That's that's Arians, and and by players I mean coaches. They drafted <laughs> Scott Miller <laughs> this year. They did not. This was not the regime that drafted what, what? Justin Watson. Okay. And so Justin Watson has been relegated behind while he's implementing he's... the future. But once Justin Watson got on the field, he was great because I do believe he is a good wide receiver. Brashad Perryman has a huge opportunity this week. But he sucks. Like he's had he two good games. He does not. I don't understand this conversation. <laughs> Why does Brashad Perryman <laughs> suck, but Justin Watson is good? Because, I don't understand that. Okay, here's why. Because, because we can't prove that Justin Watson doesn't suck because he can't get on an NFL field. 
Brashad Perryman, you have seen he is his draft capital says he gets to play a career in the NFL. He was a first round pick, if I'm remembering that correct. Perryman? Very hot. Yeah. But he's on yeah. a new roster. He could he's have on been, like he, his third team. He could have washed they, out of the league. He's already played for Cleveland. He's already played for Baltimore. Laquan, and now he's a starter above Justin Watson. Le, when Laquan Treadwell's contract is up, he will be signed somewhere. And when you sign someone, you are invested in them. He literally but, wasn't. <laughs> Treadwell wasn't signed when he was let go. He was a free agent for the whole offseason, and then he got re-signed by Minnesota. He was re-signed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My point is Brashad Perryman You don't Perryman have one. Sucks. I have breaking news. Uh, Brashad Perryman will have a better game than Justin Watson. If, and you if, know it's true. If, if Scotty you Miller's know, active, yes, Oh, my true. gosh. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> All right, here let's help the folk land here. No, are there any of these guys? Are you starting Perryman? Do you, I mean because uh, I would take a shot on Perryman. I I'm, would in I'm your willing. playoffs. I'm, yes, I, it, if look, I had to. I mean, if I need to start somebody, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah it, it it all comes down to the options. But I'm willing to flex Perryman. I w will you flex OJ Howard over Perryman? Because that could be a yes. decision in a flex position. And I would uh, I would flex OJ Howard over Perryman. I, I think. don't think I would. You know, the only thing that's kind of strange is if you look at the last five games the Lions have played, they have given nothing up to the tight end position. I O.J. Howard was on the brink of start of the week category till I looked at that and said, well, this is, you know, they're the ones that stopped the uh, uh, Kyle Rudolph run, I think. You, you know, you, you just have a, a weird situation there where they're on fire against tight ends. I don't know why that is. All right, Texans and Titans, both eight and five. Battle for the division. Titans, three-point favorites, a 50-point over-under. Juicy. I mean, who don't you start in this game? Watson and Tannehill are in. Ooh, yes. Tannehill, number five start sit question. Tannehill or Dak Prescott? Who do you go? I'm going with Ryan Tannehill. It's, this one is very close, but I, I lean Tannehill. Like, just Dak Prescott, he's at home. He's much better at home. So I, I, I think that Dak is a fine play this week, but Ryan Tannehill – the, those are fires that you just, I mean, those, those are melting the dragon eggs. These fires are so hot. Derrick Henry, he's in your lineup. Yeah. A.J. Brown, is yes. he in your lineup automatically? Yes. yes, he is. As a two. The number one start sit question on the website A.J. Brown versus Darius Slayton. A.J. Brown. Brown. That, that one's easy. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Darius Slayton, I, I mean, I get it. Darius Slayton had a big monster game. He's had several of them and now has a great matchup as well. But he does not have the talent level that A.J. Brown has. Both of these players have had big blow-up games and have a good matchup. So go with the more talented, higher capital player to in me A.J. That, Brown. Like, to me, that's not just a talent question. It's a quarterback. It's court, Well, it's quarterback, and Sterling Shepard is still there. That's what it is for Golden me. Golden Tate is still there. Like, that's AJ, what it is. A.J. Brown is the alpha of the but, team. But Mike. Oh, whoa, the voice but, of public opinion. But Corey Davis is still there. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's the that's helpful. <laughs> I'm with you, Mike. The reason I didn't make like Darius Slayton my start of the week, I, and that's not a, this is not an anti Slayton take. This no, no. Is, I, I, I think Brown. Slayton's yeah. just as talented as AJ Brown. I think that they're very close. But when you look at Golden Tate or Shepard or Slayton, they could all have the big week in the matchup. Yeah. And uh, AJ Brown or Raheem Moster in the flex. What do you think? Oh, AJ that Brown. One's, that one's really close. I, I play Moster. I'm going Moster there. I, I man. I find myself – we were talking about this on the footcast. Like, I just – I can't get fully on board with, with Raheem Mostert. I've noticed I, that. I And, look, I should be able to. Yes, he, he, he is – I've I've always thought he was great. I have said earlier in the season I think he's better than Tevin Coleman. And, he is. And Kyle Shanahan has come out and supported him. Just the volume, man. The volume is still not at a place where I feel like you can – fully trust him well we'll talk more about him later carlos hyde is he okay as an rb uh yeah, he's two? he's a fine volume play hopkins has been on fire uh pretty I'm, uh, much i'm gonna start him pretty much the best wide receiver over the Thanks, last eight Jay. weeks and uh that's what? probably it for that matchup yeah do you do anything fuller qt you getting crazy with any of these no secondary options i don't think for the so. not in tennessee no i don't okay. think so Miami Dolphins at three and ten take on the two and eleven Giants in a real doozy. Giants at three and a half point favorites. I do like them to win this game. Forty six and a half point over under. Ryan Fitzpatrick versus Eli Manning. <laughs> this, this matchup 
has a combined 22 losses between nice. the two teams. <laughs> that's that's so bad. Like, how is that possible? Because it's 21, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say it's not oh, possible. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Idiot. 21. But yeah. you, so get this. Ryan Fitzpatrick has played Eli Manning four times prior. All four times, Ryan Fitzpatrick was on a different team. Nice. The Bills, Texans, Jets, and Buccaneers, and now you get him with the, the Giants, Dolphins. The Giants won every single time. You know, nope, they, nope, no, they nope. lost to the Jets. They lost yeah. to the Jets oh. in 2015. Mm. But Now who's the idiot? <laughs> Me. <laughs> uh, this will be an interesting one. The matchup looks really, really good for you know obviously both quarterbacks. Yeah. They're lined up to succeed. Eli Manning should start this game. He had a couple big touchdowns last week. The Miami Dolphins defense is really bad. Is it is it silly to think of Ryan Fitzpatrick as a streaming option if Devontae Parker's back, but not think of Eli Manning with potentially Tate, Shepard, Slayton, and Ingram and Saquon? So like that's five weapons against the the one defense that you can always put up a good performance against. Are we missing something? Yeah, I mean, uh, I I think we are. I I did mention uh, him on my streaming quarterbacks when I said that. You know, T Tannehill was was my streamer that it, because you already had him that Eli would be in that list. He should be in streaming consideration. Oh, and what a victory lap that would be for fantasy owners. Oh, it would, it would be excellent. These two teams. Oh, 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 oh. The, the frogs are out, Jason. What is going on? The these two teams have are are two of the five worst teams at giving up a more than a quarterback's average fantasy points scored. So this is a perfect matchup for Eli and Fitzpatrick to be able to really go back and forth on these defenses, hit the over, and, and provide a lot of fantasy value. I think we're all waiting to see what's going on with Devontae Parker because yeah. the worry is if you don't have Parker, can Isaiah Ford and Alan Hearns really get it done? Nope. And, and yeah, I mean, it. I, you think no. I mean, Fitz Magic can do magical things, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a bad crew. <laughs> you know, Patrick Laird and Isaiah Ford and Alan Hearns is not the group you want to rely on. No, no, there's not a lot of confidence there, and you saw last week what the floor is without Devontae Parker. You have the evidence that he didn't overcome it last week for fantasy owners, right? Right. Patrick Laird. Mike, thoughts on Patrick Laird? You can play him the the snaps. Are, are you scared of Laird? Uh, yeah, because he's Patrick Laird on the Miami Dolphins. But the opportunity is there. The snaps are there. Twenty opportunities last week. We we talked about him. He's he's been putting up fantasy production. It's not pretty, but it's there. the The Giants are not a scary matchup for fantasy running backs. Over twenty one points a week to the position. And Patrick Laird is involved in the passing game. So I expect double-digit carries, and I expect five-plus targets for Laird. Is Patrick Laird even higher of an upside play if Parker's out? No. I would. Yeah, I would say no. I think Parker's the, the engine for the offense. All right. Do you have a direction that you lean with the wide receivers in New York? And I think this is a, the, uh, one of the hardest questions of the week because the matchup's so good, 32.5 fantasy points per game the Dolphins are giving up. It's going to be distributed among those guys. Tate disappeared last week. That she concerns Shepard me. Shepard mostly disappeared as well. Uh, I, I rank them Slayton, Shepard, Tate. I do as well. I was really expecting more from Tate last week. I was too. But Slayton Almost took had it a all. touch though. Really, really yeah. close. A little fingertip uh, away from a one. Fingertip slip? Yeah. Uh, uh, nobody else that you're talking to on the wide receiver side no. for Miami – Mike Gesicki, he's had three monster weeks in the last six. He's had three poo-poo weeks. Are you willing to take am, a yes, shot? Yes, I am willing to take a shot, especially if you want to talk about who gets the uptick in targets if Devontae Parker is out, it would be Gesicki for me. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, last week should have had a better game and didn't, and that's oftentimes where uh, you end up chasing what happened last week instead of sticking with what the process was. And when you – when you stick with what the process is, which is the uptick in volume, the quality matchup, the the uh, getting more involved in, and actually showing that he's a good NFL player, I, I think Gasicki is someone you could roll with. All right, uh, let's move on. Seahawks, Panthers. Seahawks heading to Carolina. They're six-point favorites. It's a 48-and-a-half point over-under. 
and I just don't see how Carolina wins this football game. Since the week seven by Carolina has allowed uh, an incredible 34.3 fantasy points per game to running backs. They are an awesome matchup for your fantasy players. If you have Chris Carson, if you congratulations. See, yeah. If you're looking at Chris Carson on the other side of your matchup, oh, you'd be afraid. Be, be scared. Be very afraid. Uh, 60 per- 60% of all touchdowns scored against Carolina have been on the ground. Russell Wilson, Kyle Allen, Mike is spamming <laughs> our Slack what? channels. How dare you? I'm informing. Our Slack channels? I'm informing everybody. Yes, but when you accompany all of your consistency charts about Russell Wilson <laughs> with a giant picture of Russell Wilson's face. A, always a smug smarmy you know the, the photo captured just right that's, that's right. on russell for taking so many of those photos yeah yeah so there you go you have russell wilson against the carolina defense that you know what what can you expect from russell wilson in this game if the recipe to beat carolina is on the ground you know russell's always got the chance to be hyper efficient and throw four touchdowns yeah i mean when you're down near the goal line you can't count him out but i think the point is since week seven which is I mean, that's that's half the year. Russell Wilson is the quarterback 15, only one time, and only he, one time finishing as a top 12 quarterback during that span. And the reason his average is still that high is because he went absolutely hamburglers against Tampa Bay. But other than that, if, if that here's, performance was just average, he would, he would be like borderline droppable right now. Yeah, I mean, here's his fantasy finish. But he's still since, Russell Wilson. Since week seven. Quarterback 18, 17, 1. Yeah, where he crushed. 14, 19, 16, 27. That's, I mean, that's certainly not getting it done. No, I, I was looking at all of the quarterbacks on those consistency charts this year and kind of asking myself the question, you know, which players would I've actually wanted over Russell Wilson? Because he hasn't really destroyed you. You know, there's been there's been a handful sure. of quarterbacks that have given you like the you know, like when Deshaun Watson put out his pure dud week and beat you up in a week, but it hasn't been what you hoped for. Now there's a lot of rumor and talk about Tyler Lockett being a hundred percent this week, so we can get into that. That'll have a big effect. I mean, a, a healthy Tyler Lockett. I we've we've seen it with Matt Ryan and his weapons. Right, your ceiling goes away if you can't escape the pocket and throw it downfield to Tyler Lockett the way that. He's been able to do. Lockett's supposed to be healthy. DK Metcalf is having a nice rookie season. Who do you prefer between those two this matchup? Between <laughs> Lockett and I'll Metcalf? I'll let Jason start it. I'm still on the Lockett side. Uh, the, the last few games obviously have been more in the favor of Metcalf, but if Lockett is healthy, we, we have a much larger sample size of Lockett. I mean, you want to go away from Lockett based on what he's done, but – the reality is Lockett's still a very talented wide receiver for a very talented quarterback that can always, you know, have a, have a touchdown. And both these guys to me are are identical. They're they're guys I don't really want to play, including Metcalf, Lockett. I just think that this game is going to be eaten up on the ground, and there's going to be a very small pie that you have to split up. So I don't really want any of them, and I think both are just as good a plays because either one could have sixty five yards and a touchdown very easily in this matchup, but either one could have two for 22. Yeah, I, I agree. It's You're hoping for a touchdown, which that's not – I think you'll probably get one. I mean, one of these two guys is scoring in this game. Maybe. Russ throws a touchdown, right? Would, I'm not saying Russell doesn't throw a touchdown, but I, I think one of these – Like Hollister could catch a touchdown. Yeah, I I'm I, I think one of these – So two, where do, two where do you in. land on Metcalf versus they're, Lockett? They're both flex-worthy players, yeah. Yeah, I like Lockett a little bit more. I, I – I believe that he is going to be but, more involved and back in the offense. But that that's kind of just the point of this conversation is you said they're flex worthy. Like Tyler Lockett is not usually a player you associate with your flex position. Yeah. Low end wide receiver two this week, yeah. high end three. On the other side, DJ Moore. Oh, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's playing. He's, he's played himself into, you know, a weekly, every week must start guy. What about Curtis Samuel? He has to get a touchdown. And I get you can do it against the uh, the Seattle secondary. 18th against fantasy wide receivers, uh, but he's like that fringe wide receiver three four for me. 
the reason we like Ian Thomas or the tight end in this matchup, if if Greg Olson is active, I would certainly start Greg Olson. Yeah. Uh, if he's gone, I would start uh, Ian Thomas. Seahawks are terrible against tight end this season. Uh, but in, in every metric you look at, if you just look at total points given up, if you compare them as to who they've played and the, you know, the strength of uh, the tight ends that they've actually gone against, it's just a great matchup. And Ian Thomas got plenty of targets last week. Do you worry about split snaps between the two if Olsen returns? Not really. If if Olsen returns, it was a concussion. Yeah, I, th I think he would be back. He's going to be back to 100% of snaps. They're not going to uh, – I mean, Greg Olsen isn't one of those guys that's ever split snaps with anyone. And then Hollister, are you willing to roll him out there? Yes. It's not, it's not a great matchup, but he's one of those barfy tight ends that has a higher upside than most tight ends at a touchdown. All right, the Bears at 7-6 and six take on the Packers at 10-3. and three. The game's in Lambeau. Packers are five-point favorites. It's a 41-point over-under. And uh, this is a rematch from week one where Green Bay won a barn burner, 10-3. to three. Woo! First game of the NFL season. Had some of the rust around it. But Mitch Trubisky, Aaron Rodgers, uh, battle in Lambeau this week. Aaron Rodgers, we have, it's been talked about a lot. The plan. We are not fans of starting Aaron Rodgers. There are a lot better options out there with more upside than Aaron Rodgers at home against the Bears. Correct? Yeah, correct. I mean, we've brought up Tannehill's <laughs> name a million times. What a world we live in. Um, but, you know, he, he's better. There's 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 a lot of What players. if I tell you that in the last five home games against Chicago, Rodgers has averaged 3.4 touchdowns per game? I would say the last five home games against Chicago have come over probably the last five years. And over the last five years, Aaron Rodgers has been a really good quarterback. Yep, but not this time. It never yeah. happened. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's dangerous, right? I mean, if you're telling me Aaron Rodgers cannot get three passing touchdowns at home in Lambeau against Chicago, you're wrong. He can't. He is, uh, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer for a reason, but he has more often than not, very similar to Russell, been very bad in fantasy. He either has a big blow-up matchup, which so far this season has only come against bottom-feeding right? bottom defenses that is easy to throw on. Uh, and he hasn't performed against good defenses. And while you can run on Chicago, enter Aaron Jones, you cannot pass very easily against the Bears. They're they're still you know a top five defense against quarterbacks. It's fourteen point six fantasy points per game is what their average. Uh, and, that, and that sounds about like what they'll give up this week. Yeah, I agree. I, I think this game is kind of disappointing for fantasy players in general. It's, it's going to be eleven degrees out. It's a forty-one point over under. It's going to be a dogfight between a couple Wait, of defenses. What did you say? This is 11 degrees? Yeah. Yes. You ever heard of that? That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> 11's really bad? It's, uh, anything under 20, and, and genuinely, for fantasy purposes. 20? 20 is your line? 20 is the line that has an effect on fantasy. 20 is when he takes the flip-flops off and puts on his socks. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ah, oh, it's a little chilly out. No, I'm saying for fantasy football purposes, okay. 20 degrees is really the... When it goes under 20 degrees, there's usually a lot less total offensive production, especially in the passing game. So that's another – I didn't realize it was that cold. Um, you know, another feather in the cap of avoid oh, Rodgers. Here we go. But the thing oh, I is – I thought you were going to your back to the dome narrative. Oh, sure. I mean, I <laughs> – I got flack. I, I said that, and then a bunch of Packers fans were like, if they built a dome, I wouldn't even go. Yes, you would, liar. <laughs> but you'd be comfortable. I would I would move on to a different team if they built me a dome. No, 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 no. We've talked about this before on the Spitballers <laughs> podcast. The, the joke about like people who like to eat food that's like way too hot. Yeah. And you like the pain. That's a hundred percent the same thing with the like football games in Lambeau Field. If you don't have, it's there's there's a morbid pleasure from your pain that comes from eating super hot. You food. like the notoriety of toughness. Yes. yes. You see how that's the being no shirtless in the snow. But that's you, the name of the book for the the hot wing eater. Yes. Notoriety of toughness. <laughs> and the thing my is, hot wing story and how I burn my tongue is you can still enjoy things without notoriety. Just try it. Have you ever looked at someone shirtless? And I'm, I'm, so I'm sorry, Green Bay. Okay, fans. is we're, that the end of the sentence? No, but I, I, I wanted to apologize because we're crushing them right now. But have you ever looked at one of the one of the dudes 
shirtless at Lambeau when it's the snow is coming down and thought what? Well, that's that's a tough feller right there. Is yes. that is that ever been the thought? No, it's I've this, always I thought have, that guy's like, drunk. That guy is an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's the same guy that drives by with a truck that is so loud you can hear from like three miles away. It's like, oh, you that's so cool. <laughs> Sorry, Green Bay. I'm sorry, saying, you. sorry. I, I love Green Bay. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> I've been to Lambeau. It's awesome. Al Borland. He's a Packers. He's fan a Packer through fan through. through and through. How tough are you, Al? Would you go to the Lam- Lambeau in the snow? I have. Yeah. Yeah. But but shirtless? No. Okay. Do, do, uh, well, let Did me, you let have me hand ask, warmers? Let me ask you genuinely. Because oh, yeah. all, all the jokes aside, uh, gen- genuinely. <laughs> and I know usually I got to say that genuinely. like three times before you still assume there's not a joke coming. There's not. When you went to Lambo in the snow, do you did that make it a better experience? Did that heighten it for you genuinely? Like it was like I'm so like it, did it increase the experience for you? Yes. Okay. See that. that did you guys? I, I win? could see that happening. Did you win that game? No, we lost to the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, oh yes, in your face, Borland. Thank you, Jason. What were we talking about? Uh <laughs> Anyways, David Cole Montgomery, game. Aaron Jones, expectations for the running backs in this matchup. Um, D- David Montgomery is not someone that I would love to start. This is a plus matchup. The Packer. This is really an incredibly even matchup across the board. The 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 Packers and the Bears. You can run on both. You cannot pass easily on either. So it's kind of one of those. But so you take talent. Talent is where you go, which is where. I don't think David Montgomery is yeah, that Yeah, I'd be trying to avoid David Montgomery. 33, 44, 42, 14, 42. That's the last five weeks. Exactly, and I do think Aaron Jones is talented. So I'm taking Aaron Jones here at home, favored, cold weather game. I, I like it. I like that the targets have returned. 13 he, total targets for Aaron Jones in if the you, past two If weeks. you look at the last seven weeks, Aaron Jones, all three of his terrible games, all on the road. When he came home, his last – uh, three home games. He finished as the running back two, three, and eight. Nice. Now, what Does about? Does he like it with eleven degrees out? I think so. What about Devonte Adams? Yeah, you're talking superstar. Cannot yeah, you, bench. You just have to play him. You have to play him, and I think he's going to have a bad game. You do. I think well, he'll be fine with this kind of a weather, and with this <laughs> level of a matchup. <laughs> this kind of a weather. This kind of a oh, weather. The weather outside is weather. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I just. I worry. He's had plenty of bad games this year, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this looks like one that could just be. You gonna one put of him those. on your bench though? Nope. Allen Robinson. I'll play. You gonna put him on your bench? Nope. Okay. Targets have been there. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Graham. You gonna put him on your bench? No. <laughs> yeah. I would never because he's him. on the waiver wire. He, that is correct. <laughs> Patriots at ten and three taking on the now uh, victorious Cincinnati Bengals. This game's in Cincinnati. The Patriots are ten point favorites. It's been rough sledding for the Patriots' offense of late outside of arguably the most consistent wide receiver in all of fantasy football, Julian Edelman. Second most targets in the NFL and never lets you down, ever. Like, he just goes out and does his thing. But Tom Brady lets you down from time to time. His completion percentage over the last four weeks, 46, 51, 52. Uh Uh-oh. And... Uh-oh. That's not what you want. You don't want 55. Tom Brady. The plant man. Is leading the league in Uh-oh. pass attempts. Oh, are we going to get a plant man? Yeah. Oh. Needs some more chloroform. It's been a while since we've called him the plant man, but uh, yeah, I mean. Did you say he needs some more chlorophyll <laughs> to perform? <laughs> yes. Chlorophyll. Is, is he low? <laughs> more like. Chlorophyll. Now, on paper, the Bengals defense. I think I actually said chloroform, I mean, which would not help him perform. <laughs> Why don't? Yeah, chloroform would be bad. <laughs> that would be the opposite. That would be real bad. Whoops. Go to sleep. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but he is our quarterback 13 on the fringe of start worthy consideration against the Bengals defense that's 24th against quarterbacks on, over I'm, the year. I'm moving him down right now. Yeah. He will not be 13 anymore. Um, it is a plus matchup, but he doesn't have a lot of weapons right now. I mean, that's kind of the give and take. It is a plus matchup. The last three weeks, the the Bengals have been great against quarterbacks, but it's been uh, Baker, Darnold, and I don't remember which quarterback was playing in Pittsburgh that week. I think it was Duck, but it might have been. So it, then, it's the, those completion percentages they, that Andy just rattled off that gives you great confidence in the quarterback play of Tom Brady right now. 
No, he's he has he has not looked good. And keep in mind, he's dealing with an elbow injury that there were rumors he might have missed a game a couple games ago, and it's showing on the field. I'm I, I was just speaking of the the matchup. For I, the don't Bengals play, I don't think you I don't think you play Tom Brady. I'm not. I agree. All, All right, right, move on. on. Joe Mixon, he's been great. I talked about him. him on buy sell. Yep. Put him in your lineup. Sonny Michelle. No, no. Swing and a miss. Sure. <laughs> James White, sure. You can play James White yeah, because your upside was two weeks ago when he was the number one overall running back. Tyler Boyd. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. No. No, you I'm don't. not playing Tyler Boyd. No, no. I'm not playing Andy Dalton's number one against no. the Patriots defense. No. All right. Edelman's in there. Are you taking a shot with any other wide receivers for this team? No. This was an easy matchup. This is so easy. Let's move on. Starts of the week. All right, so excited. Semifinal week for the majority of your, your leagues. Unless you play in week 17, in which case it's like your first week of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I took a poll, by the way. There's 6% of you out there. I was worried because like we, we really do build this show 100% around week 16 championship games, and I just wanted to make sure. The half of you aren't playing week yeah, 17. Yeah, it's not some higher percentage, and it came up. 20,000 votes and like 6% of you are in week 17, which means that like probably 3% of you are doing it on purpose and the other 3% are stuck in leagues that are just stuck on week 17. Which we will be here. We will. We'll be here week 17, but but we shouldn't. But it's more like, <laughs> but we shouldn't. But we're be. here for the people. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go through the motions. Yep. <laughs> All right. Very excited though for the starts of the week this week. Very big week for your team. I'm going to kick it off at the quarterback position. Oh, my I know. Goodness. I know. And I'm so excited about this. Oh, because of oh. My, my start of the week is Matt Ryan against San Francisco. Yes, Matt Ryan. San Francisco has been incredibly bad against fantasy quarterbacks. Do you want to know how bad? I, funny enough, I had just, Did you pointed, see this? I had just pointed it out to Jason. The house of cards in San Francisco in terms of what they've done against fantasy quarterbacks, it came down in full. Last week, you saw Drew Brees, the number one overall quarterback against them. They are the worst. Not kind of in the bottom quarter. They're the dead last worst team. I'm going to emphasize that awkwardly. In the NFL, over the last six weeks. Nailed it. In terms of fantasy points given up to the quarterback position. That's Not in, two weeks. That seems six impossible. Six weeks. Well, they Here, did give up like two and a half great performances in one to Drew Brees. Okay, but then the week before, the number 12, 12, 6 performances against them. 14, 7. They have five defensive starters that missed practice this week. Sherman out. D. Ford gone. Yeah, Sherman being out is a big deal. That's I, monstrous. I am, I'm so mad at you right now. So, Because you believe me? Because he has to decide I have between, to decide Matt Ryan between and Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan. Carson it's, Wentz in a great you, matchup. You who knew has, it was selfish. <laughs> Carson Wentz in a great matchup with no weapons whatsoever. Matt Ryan is my start of the week, and I would I, I think would I'd go. Would you play Matt Ryan over Carson Wentz? I think I would. I think Ooh I would. Oh my spicy. I don't like you. I wish I had this guy. He's my stream of the week. He's the start of the week. It's Ryan Tannehill. He's a great start against Houston. He's completing 73% of his passes, a second highest in the NFL. He's first in yards per completion at 13.4. Thank you, A.J. Brown. He's the quarterback three since taking over for Marcus Mariota. I mean, there's not there's not much more you need other than he's been great you know, on a regular basis. And now look at the matchup against Houston, who just gave up 309-3 and three to Drew Locke. Gave up 326-3 and three to the plant man Tom Brady, who we're saying is not playing well. And then four touchdowns to Lamar Jackson. But everybody gives up four touchdowns yeah, to Lamar Jackson. So, yeah, Ryan Tanhill against Houston. Um, you picked him up to play him. Put him in. And mine's, I think, similar to Matt Ryan, where it seems like, I I don't know, but my starting my my start of the week at the quarterback position it's Jared Goff because the Dallas Cowboys, shockingly, the Dallas Cowboys have given up the third most points to quarterbacks over the last five weeks. Like San Francisco, they're just they're 
they're being exposed. People are figuring out how to beat them. On top of that, you have Jared Goff heating up. The L.A. Rams offense in general is heating up. Since the Baltimore implosion a few weeks ago, in the last couple of weeks, Jared Goff has averaged 350 passing yards and two touchdowns per game. I looked his way when I was looking at starts of the week before I saw that you had him locked in because of what's da- what Dallas yeah. has been doing. And when you look at those two teams, it's you know completely subjective, anecdotal, observational, whatever. The momentum is very different between those two teams. Right. And I've not seen an offense more dependent on rhythm than the Rams and Jared Goff and the weapons there. I, I believe what you're saying. By the way, I am apparently on a big island with Matt Ryan based on where like the industry has him ranked. Yeah. I mean, it, because I think... They have him at like 21 on the week. Everybody still believes, and it's difficult not to, that the San Francisco 49ers defense is... I just bumped Ryan up. Great. Yeah, I, uh, he's definitely not the quarterback 21. He, no. He's higher than that. But, you know, if, if he's start of the week, that's going to be a guy that, you know, we're we're hoping is top 12. Yeah, exactly. All right, running backs, we good? Yep. Yeah, let's do it. Chris Carson is getting my top five guarantee this week. My guy's going to show up for the playoffs. Carolina is a big piece of this. I don't understand how Carson doesn't end up in the top five. Ultimately, these things come down to, you know, is it a play action pass from the one yard line that goes to Jacob Hollister instead it gets handed off to Chris Carson? But Carolina's last five weeks, the opposing running backs have finished fourth, 16th, and then seventh, first, seventh. Chris Carson, there's no Rashad Penny anymore. He's at home. This, this is just a great opportunity for Chris Carson. He's number nine right now since week four in fantasy points per game at the running back position, but he's only had one top five finish the entire year. He hasn't given you the week winning week. I think it comes right now when you need it most in the fantasy playoffs. My start of the week is going to be Raheem Mostert. Uh, you know, we were talking about him a, l- a little You've while. really risen on him over the course of the week because I feel like in the very beginning you were hesitant. I, I was, and in fact, on yesterday's footcast, I had Mike's start of the week in as mine, and then while we were footcasting and talking about Raheem Mostert, looking deeper into it, Kyle Shanahan is saying, look, I'm trying to balance the run game, but Raheem is making it difficult on me. He's just been too good with what he's been doing, continues to do. I have to get him the ball more. Great, because he's been he's been fantastic. The head coach is saying he, he he just can't stop giving the ball to him, and he's got to get him the ball more. You saw it, right? Tevin Coleman isn't the starter anymore. If he is, he's the honorary starter. He's the slap a C on the chest and C on the bench because Raheem Moster is getting the ball, and he's been great over the last three weeks when he's given been given the opportunity. He's the running back three with finishes of. The running back 12, the running back 4, and the running back 4. Now he has a bit of an Eckler feel to him right now. For sure. And Eckler yeah. is also my start of the week. I mean, look, when you've got guys that are just getting it done and they're fantastic every week, just stay in those flames. He's on fire. This is NBA well, Jam we, rule. We have to face Mostert in our League One league, and I'm, I I'm not excited that. about I that. I hate maybe. that we didn't pick up. Mike, running back. My running back, start of the week, it's the Raiders running back. Whoever that is, if it's Josh Jacobs, I'm telling you, I will have the confidence to plug him in. If it's DeAndre Washington, I have the confidence to plug him in. Jacksonville in the last four games, they're giving up over 38 fantasy points to the running back position. Thirty Over 38 points a game to the running back position. That's preposterous. In that time span, second, Houston, three fewer points a game. And that's a huge margin. Three points fewer. Like Jacksonville is absolutely terrible against running backs, and the Raiders are at home. I I love this matchup. All right, my wide receiver start of the week has finished 121st, 43rd, 45th, 16th, and 28th in the last five weeks. And his name is Cooper Cup. I love this start of the week. Cooper Cup really? against Dallas. Okay. Mike's illustrated through his discussion on Jared Goff. Dallas has allowed top 12 weeks to wide receiving cores from Detroit, Buffalo, Chicago in recent weeks. They've given up the eighth most fantasy points to wide receiver over the last five games. It's part of being exposed, like Mike said. The reason he likes Jared Goff, 
You know, frankly, Cooper Cup is due for one of those big games. He's been consistently targeted. He's still averaging 8.8 a game over the course of the year. He scored last week, and he's a critical part of this game alongside Robert Woods right now. Cooks is not involved. It's been Higby. It's been Woods. And then Cups had some targets that have gone awry, and he, he ended up in the end zone last week. The Rams, they're finding their groove on offense. I can't see Cooper Cup being held down. And I know our listeners need a pat on the butt with Cooper Cup right now. Yeah, Dallas has been giving up a lot of fantasy points to the slot receiver. Now, the question is, who's going to be – because they play a cover three where they, they give up passes a lot to the you know the, the short stuff. They, they do that on purpose by design. Now, a lot of that's Robert Woods, but then the slot guy's been Cooper Cup. So, this is going to be interesting to see which one. one of these guys is going to have a great game, and I think both could have a good game. Well, and I think Robert Woods, everybody is just excited about and playing him with, with no qualms or concerns, but but uh, Cooper Cup, this yeah. is a week for Ro- Ro- in, in another uh, another insight to our League One, we have Robert Woods, and we are facing Cooper Cup. So, Andy, I hope I'm your start sorry. of the week is I'm sorry. stupid. So, wait, we both have, we've both picked our opponent's start of the week? Rank because has- we are so unbiased and objective yeah. just incredible men my start of the week here i realize it's going to be tough sledding for oh so smooth so smooth kenny g kenny galladay even though you've got david blau throwing the ball to you even though you've got so blau eight to twelve defenders all around you at all times i'm still going twelve to- Eight to twelve, yeah. I mean, illegal. Yeah, he won't get the yards, but it's it's. it's <laughs> well, the ref, the ref counts. It's one. going to feel like that because you know I brought it up earlier. The depth chart for the Lions at wide receiver is Kenny Galladay, Danny Amendola, and some guy named I believe it was Chris Lacey. That's it. Yeah, he's t- he's too big, too fast, too strong. Yeah, and so and he's uh, he's been very good. I he had one bad game uh, with Blau. I just think this is I mean Tampa Bay is not the matchup. They don't have the personnel that I'm afraid of. I'm going to go with the big, strong, tough, tall, smooth route run and wide receiver, and he's going to have a good game. Tampa Bay, since week nine. Fantasy points given up to wide receivers. First, second, 11th, fifth, 11th, seventh. And the nice thing is he gets all of them. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the it, pie, when you when you take that pie chart. And would you're you like, play oh. Cortland Sutton this week against Tampa Bay if that was the matchup? Yep. Mike? I would, but yeah, I mean that—that's the same situation. Blau, Locke, uh, one guy at the wi- at wide receiver. The concern for Kenny Galladay is that for the first time in history, we see a guy triple covered on every single play. I'd still throw it to him, and Blau will too. Yeah, I I, it it gets a little bit too. Simpli- I'm not saying it, I'm benching him. It gets but- too simplistic to say that the depth chart's bad to me. Uh, you know, the depth chart's bad in in in, in Philadelphia. But, you know, Greg Ward's catching passes and Perkins is catching passes. They can distribute the ball around. And Galladay, I love I love locking him in. All right, my wide receiver is Jarvis Landry against the Arizona Cardinals. Layup. It is the fourth best wide receiver matchup over the last five weeks. And that's including teams that just don't score with the fantasy wide receivers. 360 dunk. <laughs> Are we just calling out basketball moves? Dude, Jarvis Landry's going to post yes. the Cardinals. I'm, I wish you would have gone with Odell. Oh, boo. But I don't, ba- because people are starting Jarvis. So I'm just thinking, I'm just saying, like, I feel like Odell would have been really, really bold of you, Jason. Or uh, Mike. It would, but I don't believe that. Yeah, I know. I believe that. I know. <laughs> Wait, did you just say people are starting Jarvis? Meanwhile, Chris Carson's your start of the week? Well, no, I just meant, like, uh, it, it was, like, Woods is the locked and loaded guy right now. I, I'm, I'm saying he's the, he's getting the pat on the butt of Jarvis, oh, yeah. Jarvis Landry is going to win weeks against Arizona. They gave up the sixth most wide receiver points in a week to San Francisco. Last week, the Pittsburgh Steelers had the 14th most wide receiver points against the Arizona Cardinals. The Steelers. Well, they, I think Hodges only threw for 150 yards. Yeah. How'd pre- that happen? The math doesn't even add up. So Deontay, touchdowns with Deontay, Deontay Johnson. Johnson. It's preposterous. No, you're hundred percent right. How bad the Cardinals and I'm going with Jarvis Landry started. With. I, I, I he love could it. be number one on the week. He could. He might do a trampoline flip dunk. That <laughs> might be the conclusion. Oh, like they do in between timeouts well, when they after, pull the trampolines after he out. He gets a touchdown. They're gonna slide a trampoline out, and he's gonna go right through the goalpost. <laughs> front flip. I'm just how? Just wait. Just you wait. Would that be worth the the oh, the, yes. the penalty? If you could do a front flip through, I mean, you'd get over, injured on the way down. Over the upright, over the upright. Yeah. 
and through the he's, woods. So what do you land on? Do you put like one of those people? In, people? Yeah, you like got the oh, crowd. You, you get yeah, you got to make it to the crowd. I would prefer. Well, you're, but isn't the like kicking net up at that point? You oh, just, you could go right into the you net. Go right into the <laughs> net. That's fine. Down. No, the net only goes up on the kick. All right. Um, you can make it. Where I would put it up for a player. I would too. I don't want. I don't want Jarvis getting injured. All right, tight end start of the week. Austin Hooper returns to glory. Love Mount Ryan. San Francisco is actually. It, it must be an. I, I figured it out. It's an NFC West thing, because Arizona can't defend the tight end position. Seattle's atrocious, and over the last five games, San Francisco is actually giving up the second most fantasy points per game at tight end. And now you take Calvin Ridley out of the equation for Mount Ryan, a beat up secondary. So you this is start, this you, is just like Austin Hooper guarantee. I think you, that, what I heard is you got to start Jason Witten because the Rams must be bad as well. Let's let's do this. The NFC West, you suck. <laughs> it is kind of it's funny. It's just funny how it, it breaks is. down. Jason, uh, I've talked about it. Ian Thomas is a great play, or Greg Olson if he is active. You want to start your tight end like you just said against the NFC West against Seattle. They've been terrible. The targets will be there, and either one is going to be a. A very high floor, probably low ceiling option to plug your tight end lineup and, and you know, go out there, get get ten points and go, whew, I didn't goose my tight end position. All right. And apparently we are loving the Rams a whole lot. Because I'm going with Tyler Higby. He's heating up a twenty five percent target share over the last two weeks while Jared Goff has been heating up. He's been playing over ninety percent of the snaps. For the Los Angeles Rams, and Everett is still sidelined. 100 plus yards for Tyler Higby in each of the last two games. If Everett's out, Higby is in. He's locked in, no question. Yeah, he's he's definitely NBA Jam's rule here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100 percent guaranteed. Boom, boom, kicker of the week. What do you do with playoff opponents? Kick their butts. Who do you do it with? The Saints kicker, Will Lutz. Staying classy. Well executed. But very, very impressive. Will Lutz is so good. <laughs> He's so good. So He's good. the best kicker not named Justin Tucker. Little bit of an injury update before we close today's show. The rest of the matchups will be on tomorrow's episode. Devontae Parker is still in the concussion protocol. No. So, the, you know, that that's pretty normal. Yeah, it's yeah, to be expected. Golden Tate last week, same situation, eventually declared uh, good to go. So we'll see what happens. Want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a DJ Chark signed jersey. Do, 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 do. $49 yesterday at pristineauction.com. All right. Use the code BALLERS. Tomorrow we got the Fantasy Forecast Part 2, BALLERS ON A BUDGET. Don't miss it. Follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Enjoy the game tonight, Foot Clan. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And don't forget, Foot Clan, this season, Omaha Steaks is sharing an amazing limited-time offer meat, with our listeners. Meat. Get a jump on that holiday shopping. Thank you for the meat-related meat, background meat, song, Mike. Meat, 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 Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar. You get the favorite gift package, the gift of meat. The gift of meat, meat, meat that meat, your family meat, and meat. friends will love, Sixty nine ninety nine. Go to omahasteaks.com, type the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar. Meat.